John Galliano has used all sorts of unorthodox methods to keep the legacy of Christian Dior alive. This season, he's even referencing another French fashion legend, Elsa Scaparelli, whose granddaughter is in the front row just to make sure that John keeps it real. I saw a lot of my, my darling grandmother, you know, there. It's like haute couture, the clothes, even though they're pet-à-porter. It's gone back to elegance, to real elegance and to real glamour. I congratulate Dior for taking that brand and reminding us what that house stands for. You know, you spend uh, half an hour just dreaming when you watch these clothes. Is that every day of our life? No. But this is craftsmanship, the most exotic furs, the most exotic leathers, the most exotic handcrafted embroideries. This is couture on a ready-to-wear uh, show. And this is what I think we live for. All the origami um, detailing came, came out of the couture, presumably. Yeah, we always like to, um, you know, we spend a lot of time experimenting in the orchestra and then we like to diffuse it for the register. So you saw some references to Japan, the jacquards overprinted with overblown flowers by um, Mr. Dior and um, Japanese, but taken or distilled quite largely. That, that this is what fashion does that nobody can copy, isn't it? Fully agree, fully agree, because, you know, we read here and there about luxury being accessible, which is fine, I mean, the more people could access, but, you know, making it too accessible at the end, you cannot do what you offer in terms of uh, embroideries, in terms of fabrics, in terms of the time you need to do things. Where do you see women wearing dresses like that, though? Nowhere, but I want to. Uh, I want to see them everywhere in Paris, in the subway, everywhere. Paris would be so chic like that. No? Don't you think? Do you think the market for this is getting bigger then? I think it's uh, becoming bigger and uh, we have demand, we have demand. My buyers were so happy. They said this is what we want. How many looks were there on that show? 58, I think? You were counting. I stopped. I put my pencil down halfway through because it was just a feast of magnificent, beautiful delight that I think Paris should always be representing. My job is to make women dream. Um, that's part of my Now duty. more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. Because dreaming is so much more, I mean, I just think reality is so overrated. <laughs> As a concept. <laughs> totally. I'd much rather be out there than out there. You think of them as fantasy clothes? A little bit, yeah. I mean, definitely wearable on the red carpet. I mean, some of them were more fantastical than others, but there were some wearable dresses in there, for sure. Wasn't there a time in Hollywood when people dressed like that all day long? Yes, thank God, not anymore, but I do like to dress up. <laughs> the models on the catwalk are playing characters. It was great because they really were impersonating the, the feelings of the cut that the clothes were. Uh, John certainly reveals every kind of woman, no? Every woman can find her style and her glamour. Do you think that this in a way is, is fashion's answer to people like H&M? You can't get those fabrics at H&M. You can't, you know, no. It's Dior and this is what Dior represents. It was great to return to use noble fabrics, ostrich furs, lambos. Luxurious. Glamour's a kind of refuge in a way. The 40s and the 30s, which was my grandmother's era, which was, you know, the period of, of the, the Depression and all of that. I mean, films were never more glamorous. Women always looked amazing. And um, there's a need, I think, to cheer oneself up. 